Hey guys, welcome back. This podcast, we are talking about my first real estate investment. Let's get into it. Tom Krieger here again, and we are with Joe Brown. Joe Brown is part of the Tom J. Krieger team. He runs the marketing division. He's stepping in again for Matt Bure, who, believe it or not, is out finding homes for buyers. He's not picking his nose. He's huh? not going. Yeah, he's well, he not going. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this this uh, podcast is going to be about real estate investments and basically your first investment as a real estate owner. A lot of wealth, a lot of generational wealth is developed in the United States through the ownership of real estate. One thing I want to make clear from the very beginning is you cannot get rich overnight in real estate. It is like an oak tree. Yeah. You start out and it grows slowly and it grows slowly. And then all of a sudden it starts to pick up speed and it becomes this behemoth. So, so you can kind of think of it that that's where your equity gains are right so correct so a traditional equity gain looks closer like seven percent would you say year over year in in real estate well not recently but yeah in real estate uh, yeah yeah so statistically depending on where you're at your value of appreciation in your property is way between five percent and seven percent that's usually where it's at in some good years not crazy years like now but good years it's about seven percent in some leaner years it's about five percent and again that is a, a direct relationship to how the economy is doing interest rates are high sometimes your appreciation rate is lower. Intre interest rates are lower, your appreciation rate is higher. The economy has a large unemployment, your rental values may stay and not climb up year after year. A real hot economy like we just got out of, um, rental rates are going up. Sure, sure. Yeah. And and I've seen uh, even I have since I have a town home yep. that the intra or, or the the percentage gain from last year to this year was almost 25%. Yes. So that that uh, you know, me buying at what I bought at is now twenty percent greater in value, so or twenty five, almost twenty five percent greater in value. And even for single family residences, I see it. Uh, it's it's around under twenty percent. Is that about eighteen percent right now? Yeah. yeah. And that's year over year. Now, yeah. part of that yeah. is due to the fact that we've had this COVID, right. and there's no inventory on the market. Um, we're talking about lumber prices like we did in the last episode, Joe. Yep. But realistically, when we don't have enough rentals on the market right now either. Sure. Okay. So people are having to pay a higher or an inflated rental price because we don't have enough. And again, that goes back, Joe, to what we talked about before. It's the millennials coming out of the house yeah. and saying, okay, I'm, I don't want to live at home anymore. I got my debt paid off or I've got it under control, my student loans or what have you. And now I want to get out in the market. Well, I can't buy anything right now. So I'm going to at least rent a building. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you, you can see this in the university cities too, the amount of dorm activity. They're buying up old houses around the university and leveling them. And they're building five, six, seven, eight, ten story dorms yeah. to house these kids. Now these are the 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 heavy hitter investors rather than yes, the first yes. time, right? But that what I'm trying to express is that um there's a large demand for rental properties right now. Yeah. Okay. And even though we have inflated prices because of what's happening, they're still making a profit. I'll give you an example, Joe, um, and we'll kind of get into this. Um, I'm going to explain to people about how you want to look at buying an investment property. What are the most important things to look at? And one of them is what we call cash on cash return. Now, cash on cash return, what does it mean? It means that the amount of cash you put in personally to the amount of profit after expenses you get. That's the return on cash on cash. It is not what did I pay for the property and what is my rent. Okay, it needs to be a little more specific. So you can have two scenarios with cash on cash returns. As an example, I have a client who just the other day bought a $100,000 condo, mm -hmm. all right? And she's gonna rent that condo out for $1,000 a month, okay? Her fixed expenses, her taxes and insurance and everything are gonna be about $100. 
So she's going to get, after she pays her expenses, $900 a month, what we use the term as cash flow after her expenses. If you take that $900 a month and multiply it times 12 months, that gives you $10,800 of profit. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So you can take that $10,800 of profit, divide it by your initial cash investment of $100,000, and that gives you a rate of return of 10.8%, hmm. which is, for me, that's a great number. Yeah. Now in Tucson, it's usually, depending on the size of the property, it's usually seven or 8%. But sometimes we're able to find these gems and we can get a little over 10%. Do you use cap rate when you start to uh, the capital capitalization rate yes. when you look at these sort of investments? Exactly, exactly. Okay. So what I gave you was a cash on cash return or, or another term for that is a cap rate. Okay. 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 Um, then there's another type of looking at cash on cash return. Let's say that you were going to buy the same $100,000 condo and you were going to finance it. Well, most people who lend to you at fair rates want 25% investment. In other words, it's your skin in the game. So on a $100,000 purchase, you'd have to come in with about $25,000 of your own money. That's the cash that you put in. Yeah. Okay. So let's do the same numbers and say that on that same property, you're going to get 10,000, or I'm sorry, you're going to get $900 a month cash flow. But wait a minute, I have a loan on this. And the term we use for that is debt service payment, the debt service. You're servicing the debt or the loan. And a payment like that at today's rates are about $337. So you would subtract that $337 from the $900. It would give you about $563 of cash flow you'd have after expenses. Okay. Okay. So you take that $563, you multiply it times 12 years, put it out for the whole year, you're going to get about $6,756 worth of profit. Now you take that $6,756 and divide it by your $25,000 that you put into the property, will give you a rate of return of about 27%. Gotcha. This is where the term using other people's money, okay, OPM, other people's money, is why investors want to borrow money against the property. The more you borrow, usually the greater your return on your cash investment. And these are these are long term outlooks. These aren't a, a, a flip or anything like that. Like this is something you buy and you hold on to buy and hold. for a long period yep. of time. Like Warren Buffett, buy yep. and hold. Yep. Yeah, so that that's a that would be a good thing for someone like my age and the millennial generation yep. to to look into. And if they have kids in the future, you know, this uh, equity that's being built by other people paying down your mortgage, yep. even uh, that can be passed down and create generational wealth. Exactly. And as you pay one off, then you can apply all that profit to pay the next one you buy off. And the next one you pay off, and before you know it, and there's a formula. Before you know it, you have so much equity or so much cash coming in that you can now just pay cash for everything. Yeah, yeah, and but it and, takes time. Uh, sure, sure. I I could only imagine, and <laughs> and having a good agent on your side is probably very important. Who who understands these methods and has done these methods, and I know you know a lot of agents around the country. Uh, in that regard. Absolutely. There are many agents who are in this industry of investment properties, okay? They don't necessarily need to be a commercial broker. Um, we're talking about single family residents, duplexes, maybe four plexes in other areas of the country. But you want to make sure that you do your calculations and that your agent can show you um, what the realistic aspect is in, in buying a property. Okay. Gotcha. Well, yeah. well, one of the uh, tips I recently learned, and, and this might be a good one, is that for a hundred thousand dollar condo, for instance, like your yep. your uh, example that you gave, if you could do one percent of that and it be rent, that's a solid buy. Absolutely. So a, a two hundred fifty thousand dollar home, and you, you're getting uh, twenty five hundred in, in rents every month. That's that's a generally a pretty good rule of thumb yes. um, without having to, to do the uh, cap rate um, ma exactly. math behind it. Exactly. So if you're not a mathlete like me, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's an easy way to think yeah. about it. And, and, and you have to also look at your expenses, make sure you do that because in some yeah, areas, sure. HOAs are pretty high. 
Sure. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. There's a lot of factors that can go into it, right. and and that's why having having a, a good agent. Yeah. Yeah. A good agent can calc- yeah. help you calculate those numbers. Yep. Um, and, and so, what is what is a flip? look like so those are those are shorter returns yeah and shorter investments um what what are the differences there between a long term and a and a flip so a flip is you're going into the project knowing that i'm going to take a building and i'm going to add some improvement to it Mm -hmm. i'm going to enhance it it could be as something as simple as paint or it could be as complex as gutting it and coming from the studs out all right Having a seasoned agent, again, and I'm going to reference this, having a seasoned agent that can help you walk through this process is very important, although this process can be very profitable. It takes a little more time to find these because, quite honestly, there are lots of people out there right now looking for for fix and flips. Because there's TV shows that, because that there's tell us HGTV we can make money. TV and all of those people, <laughs> correct. <laughs> yep. And if you're not seasoned in this, trying to do this on your own, What's that disclaimer? You know, professional driver on course, closed circuit, closed course. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. You don't try and do this on your own. At yeah. least, at least get some advice. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But there are profit margins as little as twenty thousand and as much as two hundred and fifty thousand on these types of deals. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, especially with with lumber prices the way they are, it, it's yes. probably really difficult to find. A flip right now in this market. Yes, with with a low inventory and higher lumber costs, looking to flip would probably your margins would probably be nothing if anything. Yeah, it if you're doing a major rehab, but if you're going in and doing like ceramic flooring, uh, carpeting, painting, plumbing fixtures, they haven't gone crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, with that, explain to me what solely appreciation. Means. Okay, sole appreciation is when you buy a property and you know what your fixed costs are to rent it. Like, for instance, let's go back to our condo. Yep. Okay, yep. Um, somebody may be happy with eight percent rate of return. Okay, mm-hmm. they're buying this because this marketplace is appreciating it at eight percent versus a standard six or five percent. Yeah. So I'm getting it in appreciation. That's what we're talking about there, where we talk sole appreciation rental. So I'm going to buy a four family, and this is more in this arena, a a little more number of units. So I'm going to buy a four family, and I'm going to make sure that the rents pay me a rate of return. And usually in four families, seven, eight percent is a good rate. And then I'm going to wait for the building to appreciate. And over time, the rents will go up. So I may increase the rents by $20 a month, year over year over year, so that our rental rates are going up. Mm -hmm. So over a period of time, you'll have a greater rate of return on your rentals, but the property values are increasing too. And if we get into an inflationary area, which some people think we are, Mm -hmm. um, and I'm again, I am not an economist, but if if we get into an, an inflationary area, real estate is where you wanna be because that's the one thing that really goes fast. And it stays pretty steady. Yes, right? but the appreciation goes fast. Oh, oh gotcha. So yeah. you may be jumping up to 9 10% appreciation rates if oh. inflation comes in. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So so it, you, what I'm getting is that in this market, we're kind of looking at uh, buy and holds is, is a smart way yes. to go. Buying hold is always a smart way to go. It really is. And you just, you take your profits. And if you're really smart, you take your profits and buy down your principal. So you make principal reduction payments and you own the property free and clear sooner. Hmm. So if you apply a certain amount, um, they call it mortgage curtailment. That's the 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 quote, quote, fancy name for it. Sure. But you maybe make an extra $200 a month payments and you take your 30-year note, maybe get it down to 20 years. Hmm. So, so what would you do right now, or, or what are you doing right now, currently, as uh, with your investor hat on? How how are you approaching this market? So, what I've done over the last twelve months is I've done uh, cash on cash returns, buy it and keep the rental properties. Okay, I've done flips where I put. Uh, money into it and effort. I've also done sole appreciation where I bought something, I'm just letting it rise, okay? The, the one thing that is at what we call a valid, a value added flip, that's a real big remodel job. And I think that's what you were referring to before when we were talking about lumber prices. Yep.
that's where you really go in and gut a house. Yeah. And you start, or you get an addition. Or you buy a single family home on a duplex lot and you put another property on there. That's a value added. Now you can also go at value added into like 24 unit, like apartment complexes. And then when you start doing that, you're into more like how much per door is it costing me? 30,000, 40,000, 50,000. If I put 5,000 improvements in each door or apartment, then I can get a return of maybe 10 thousand on it. Okay. So as a just a quick example, I buy a building with thirty thousand a door, I put five thousand a door into it and I sell it for uh, five thousand more above that. And let's say I have twenty units, so that's a hundred thousand dollars. Gotcha. Profit. So yeah. would that would a good method then go in and find something that might need some work? put a little bit of money into it, increase your, your equity position. Yes. And then you can rent it out for a higher rental rate than correct than what you would normally look at. Correct. And some people that want to do the value added fix and flips will do the construction because they don't want to handle the, the maintenance aspect of management. Sure. So they'll go in, buy a you know, rundown uh, building, bring it up to snuff, and then sell it to the investor who doesn't mind doing the management. He just doesn't want to do the rehabbing. Mm -hmm. So they kind of work together as a couple, mm -hmm. right? I'm going in, I'm going to buy this at a reasonable price. I'm going to put a reasonable amount of money into it. And I'm going to make a reasonable profit. I'm going to buy it from you from a reasonable amount of profit. And then I'm going to make a rate of return on my money through the rents. And the nice thing about houses is they're not stocks. They can't no. they can't reach zero. Well, right? no, they can't reach zero, well, but they don't they, always go up. Sure, they can decrease yeah, in value, but they you, don't always go it, up. It at least will have some inherent value being um, physically you know, exactly. in a physical item. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. exactly. Gotcha. Uh, and then you have value added rentals. Okay, this is for the long term investor. So you maybe you buy a foreclosure. Okay, we just, in our last episode, we talked about forbearance and potential foreclosures. Yeah. Usually what happens to a foreclosure is that you don't get the property in as good a condition as it was when you put the loan on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the banks are going to sell those at a uh, discounted price. You're going to go in there and you're going to say, okay, if I fix this with the, your realtor, go in there and fix this and fix that and put this amount of money into what do you think it'll sell for? Well, we'll be able to get X amount of dollars above, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. Let's do this. The business plan makes sense. Profit margins are where I'm comfortable with. That's a value-added rental long-term. Now you've got it fixed up and, and you've got it looking right where it needs to be. Now you go out and introduce it to the market as a rental property and you can get the top dollar rents. So, so with a first-time investor, I, w I would think that the first step might be to talk to an experienced agent and say, hey, keep me top of mind while you're doing your prospecting, right? And and, yeah. and, and they might be able to find a uh, $100,000 condo that might need a little bit of work or, or something, you know, a little bit of upkeep, and then they can rent it out. Is is that a good place to start, do you think, for... Yeah, so I'm going to get a little into the weeds here. Please follow me. Lots of people want to do this. Yeah. Everybody says, if you find something, a great deal, I'll buy it. Right. Well, my response is, if I find a great deal, you'll be the second one making an offer. <laughs> It'll okay? be you who's number exactly. one. Exactly. Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to lock in with the real estate agent and say, I want to hire you to go work for me to go look for these properties. Yeah. Okay? Just don't be flippant about it because, quite honestly, good real estate agents like myself or Matt... We're not going to spend time looking for you if you're not going to commit to us. As a fair weather investor, yeah, you, you got to yeah. be all in we or get, nothing. Right? All the time I get calls, okay? They say, hey, Tom, if you ever come across it, and I'm honest with them, I says, you're not going to hear about it until there's three or four other offers on it. Yeah. If you want me to go look for that, then you have to hire me yeah. as your agent representing you to get the deal. And if you want to go out on your own, it, it's... Wonderful. More power to you. Go far. I mean, yep. ed self education is something I can't take away from you. Right. Okay. Right. It just takes time. Yep. You no. Know? Yep. But a good real estate agent, if you hire them to go look for you, they'll get you a great deal. Yeah. And it'll be well worth the money spent. It's like going to the good mechanic or the neighbor down store down the street that fixed his kids' uh, 
motorcycle or go kart. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then now he wants to work on your Mercedes Benz. Uh, no, thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That knocking noise won't go away. No, it won't go away. <laughs> right. So it's, again, to wrap this up, you know, to basically the bottom line, all this first time investing, investment, if you want to get into investing, first of all, find the realtor. Yeah. Okay. Sit down with the realtor, put a business plan together, figure out what you want. Okay. So we call that reverse engineer it. I want to get X amount of dollars per month or per year. Okay. I have this amount of money to work with. Is that possible? Yes, it is. And this is how it is going to have to happen. No, it isn't. We have to change your expectations a little bit right now. And then this is how it's going to happen. And yeah. if you take the time to build the business plan, it'll pay dividends for you later on. Yeah. Try and make sure you take your time Learn where the pitfalls are in this business. Don't buy something in the wrong area unless you're the type of person that can deal with that. Hmm. Okay? It's like you can buy slow-moving, safe stocks, or you can get more into the riskier stocks, but you have to have the stomach to be able to do that. And a good real estate agent will lay that out for you. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's, that's good advice. Um, well, thank you for, uh, for talking about this, this topic. I know we could go even further. Oh, and further. forever, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> this um, is my, I love this. This is, you know, yeah. for me, this is like honey. That's actually the reason uh, why uh, I got licensed as an agent as well, um, to, to do work for myself mainly, you right. know, and, and, and find uh, some of those, those investments and things. And, and having your knowledge sitting here has, has uh, I, I've just been a sponge. So thank you for, for uh, giving, dishing all that out to me. And, <laughs> You're welcome, Joe. And, and uh, hopefully in future podcasts, we can talk about uh, even my journey um, getting my first investment property. Absolutely. I'd love to, I'd love to chronic, put that in chronological order. Let's build a storybook for you on that one. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you guys for listening and uh, we'll, we'll hope to see you next week on, on next week's podcast. Yep. And next week's podcast will be about how do I go about getting my offer accepted when I'm in the midst of 10 other offers. Boy, that sounds like a big one. See you guys next week. Have Take a care. great day. Stay safe. Thank you so much for tuning into the Nitty Gritty podcast. If you have any questions about buying, selling, investing, or even getting your real estate license, please give us a call or reach out to us. Our info is in the description.